okay, so when I was 17, um, and this is the, this is this stage in my life where my creativity is gone. Um, I, I like I have hints of it here and there, but it's it's not at all what it should be. So I basically this is the only thing I have written down from when I was 17. I, I thought up of this ideal way to optimistically make decisions um, and have a good perspective from which to view things. And I, I have tried to explain it to people and it's very difficult for me to explain it. So I don't know if I'm the best explainer, but I, I think it's a good idea. And that's to be selfish to help others. And uh, let me elaborate. Most people, when I explain this to them, um, I have to tell them something like, oh, be selfish and don't be stupid. But that's like mean. It's patronizing. I don't think people who watch me, however, are stupid. So I'm not going to rephrase it like that. I'm going to, I'm going to rephrase it like, I don't think people who will end up watching me are stupid, however. So I'm not going to phrase it like that. I'm going to phrase it in the way that it's supposed to be phrased, which is be selfish in the long term, which roughly translates to if you can turn down one marshmallow right now for three marshmallows in five minutes, turn down the one marshmallow right now because you're being more selfish, but you're just not going for immediate pleasure. You be selfish, but you don't be stupid. Okay. And this gets broken so often. And every single time, it always leads to their downfall. Like um, in business, for example, let's say I have an accountant who conspires with another company to funnel my assets out of my company into theirs. Yeah, they're being selfish, right? But they're also being stupid because they're doing that in my company. And if I was a successful businessman, I would have a system of checks and balances and they would get caught. And they would have to forfeit everything. They would lose a lot more as well. Um, the company that they were uh, conspiring with, they would have to forfeit everything. And I would get all my money back. They'd lose everything. They'd end up incarcerated. And I like to imagine in this hypothetical situation, a bit of sadistic, like, oh, this accountant won't be able to see their children for the next 10 years and, and things like that. And nobody's going to hire them. And I'm going to spread the word on how trust, untrustworthy they are. And uh, just out of spite. Out of like a natural desire for revenge. Um, it's this like irrational thing. But it, uh, I believe that this sort of attitude actually helps the species as a whole. Um, to, to let other people know. To get back at people when they hurt you. And really what kind of employer would hire them after that? What kind of captain would add someone to their ship who they know has committed mutiny before? Now, tell me, how is that selfish? Like, on their part, how is that selfish? If that accountant wanted what was best for themselves, why the hell would they break the rules of which they know they're going to get punished for? You, you want to be selfish? Don't be stupid like that. You be selfish in the long term, because... That's actually the antidote to crony capitalism, by the way. People don't think in the long term, and that's the problem. But everyone knows how important it is to cut back on put, uh, putting harmful waste in the, in the environment. And everyone knows how helpful it is in the long term to um, have a, a presence of immense biodiversity and how a biodiverse landscape actually improves the economy drastically, yet they're so focused on the short-term gains that they sacrifice the long-term gains. And in the end, it actually hurts them. Like, that's not selfish. You're setting yourself up for failure. That's just stupidity. Before you pop a pill and think about like, yeah, this will take the pain away for two hours. What about the consequences two weeks from now, two months, two years from now? When you do everything... Your parents tell you, you go to college because they tell you, you follow a career path because they tell you to follow it. You're avoiding the pain of them disowning you in the short term, but you're screwing over your life in the long term. You apply this with food, with girls, with hobbies, uh, getting good at skills like sports, language, uh, uh, school, business, 
uh, making friends um, work, uh, 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 political views, travel, fashion, uh, education, exercise, drugs, privacy, hygiene, everything. You can apply this to everything in your life. Everyone always thinks that being selfish is wrong. Selfishness is such a bad word. They got the wrong idea. Being selfish is the correct way to live life. Let's say you, you let's, take, let's take capitalism, for example, okay? A lot of people criticize capitalism because they think that you make money by taking advantage of your customers. But in a, in a perfect world, which we don't live in a perfect world, and this capitalism that we live in right now is not a perfect, it's not ideal, and I don't think it ever can be ideal, but in an in a ideal world, let's say, if I were to make trash products and market them really well, well, I'm not being selfish, I'm being stupid. Or at least I'm not good at being selfish. Because once word gets around that my products suck, nobody's going to buy them anymore. It'll ruin my reputation. And nobody will ever buy products from me ever again, even if they're good products, because I betrayed their trust. So if I was truly selfish and I was smart about it, I would make a better product. A product that would actually convince people that it's worth buying and that they would be proud of buying. So that way, word would get around that they can trust the things that I buy, that, that I sell. And so that way they'd buy my next product and then my next one after that. And I'd keep building on it. So by helping myself, I end up helping others. And that's the game that we would play in this capitalist society. So people who don't know any better, who can't think this way, actually, they, they just go like, oh, capitalism bad. It's not even that they don't think... They just don't ever bother to think. They just go, capitalism bad. Like, these people don't actually can stop to consider, wait, what's the problems with society? And is that coming from this kind of capitalism, this free market? Or is that coming from something else? Like, people think to themselves, oh yeah, what about if the company doesn't let you compete? What if they have the copyrights and the proprietary code or patents, formulas, and all that stuff. Buddy, that's not capitalism. That's communism. Like, that's more communist than cap... That's not communism, but it's government interference. If somebody has a patent on something, if I start a company and it's truly free market, the government should not be able to say, hey, you can't do that. I'll just do it. <laughs> Nothing's stopping me. Copyright all... The problems that are associated with capitalism don't actually come from... Cap they come from... Socialism and communism and all that from those ideologies If people aren't able to compete with like Apple Which they can't and that's not because Apple controls the market But that's because government restricts everyone from making products using Apple's OS They restrict people from repairing iPhones. They restrict people from using Apple's patents the further The further deeper you go into capitalism the less the government has a say in what the people can do it's all about laissez-faire, it's free market. Everything bad associated with capitalism, like copyright abuse on YouTube and uh, companies owning um, uh, monopolistic patents and hiking up the prices of things like medicine, forcing people to have car insurance, uh, health insurance companies basically scamming people. That's all government intervention. If the government wasn't involved, then I can make insulin, the same exact insulin formula, and I could sell it for literally 1% of the price it's being sold for right now. And I would get more sales because these people who control the market are backed by government. That's not capitalism. That's what, what I would do. I would compete. But I'm prevented from competing by the government. And what I would do is selfish. By, by manufacturing this insulin and selling it, I would be helping myself. But no, the government doesn't let me be selfish because, oh, it's bad to be selfish. And it's led to the system of crony capitalism and, and bribery because people will be selfish no matter what. And when people restrict other people from also being selfish, it results in corruption. When people are not on the same page, when the jurisdiction of intent falls into the wrong hands. And that's how you get government-backed monopolies. And it doesn't help that those that are at the top right now, um, those guys... They think it actually helps them, but it really doesn't. They think it hurts others and helps them. They think that they're a part of this crony capitalism and that they, this is for their own personal gain. Sometimes 
they'll steal value from others to increase their own value. That's not the case. They're stealing value from others and they're destroying it and they're not getting any of the value themselves. It's almost always these people at the top, they end up shooting themselves in the foot so that they can shoot somebody else in the face. How about just not shoot anything at all? I've talked about this quite a bit on some other streams. This was just a brief rundown of it. Life is a game. You treat it as such and you'll have fun. And if you're playing this game and you keep doing side missions and that you're putting off the main mission, um, that's that makes things boring. You should change your strategy. Like in Zelda, if you're too afraid to lose your gear so you don't engage in any combat and, and you don't use any of that gear to begin with, then you won't enjoy the game. And you'll end the game having a bunch of like gear that you never got to use and, and you'll have less fun. This is the problem with money hoarders. Nobody gets mad when a soccer player tries to score more points, right? That's selfish though. Scoring more points, as long as they do it in a way that makes them better, nobody cares. We root for those people. If you see someone scoring and scoring and scoring without a goalie, however, just playing alone, kicking the ball in the net, you look at them like, oh, that's kind of pathetic, playing without a goalie, playing without an op opposing team. And then if um, if you see somebody playing with a goalie and they're, they're playing against an obstacle and they overcome this incredible feat, we love it, we share for it, and they love it too. But what's not selfish about that? They want the goal. They want it for themselves and they achieve it and we love it. You treat capitalism this way, you treat life this way, like a game. What happens if you cheat in soccer? Well, when you get to uni, you're going to be demolished because if you haven't practiced at all the way soccer is supposed to be played with the rules and you cheat so you don't end up getting better, you don't end up having that self-improvement, then you're going to get crushed. So how is cheating selfish? Cheating is not cheating is stupid. If you're selfish in the long term, then the best way to earn value for yourself is by helping others around you. You give them stuff they want. That way, they give you stuff you want. So this is my philosophy. Be selfish in the long term. It helps yourself and it helps everyone around you as well. And you don't have to feel guilty about having a totally normal motivation or natural desires of a normal functioning human being. This one isn't even a contribution. It's just a mediocre half quote. 